I just wanted to make a video talking about my experience with benzodiazepine use, where it took me, and to hopefully give some people some hope that recovery from it is possible. Uh, I went through hell, both taking a benzodiazepine and withdrawing from a benzodiazepine and then the after effects that it did to me afterwards. Um, it's horrendous. Unless you've lived through it, it's almost indescribable and, and it's almost too hard to believe that a doctor prescribed drug could do so much damage. So I started taking a benzodiazepine when I was about 21, 22 and I didn't take it from a doctor. I got it from somebody illegally. I was purchasing them from somebody from a, from a dealer. And um, it was so alluring because it alleviated my anxiety so effectively. And I didn't have the hangover from alcohol. And I thought I had discovered the perfect drug that made me feel the way I wanted to feel I felt confident, I felt calm, and I felt like I could do the things in life that I always wanted to do that previously I wasn't able to because anxiety would always stop me in my tracks. And so it's so easy to see how a benzodiazepine can become addictive for people like me who it offers so much relief to you initially that it becomes your crutch it becomes what you go to to feel okay in your skin and nothing had ever done that for me before like I said so it's so easy to go down that road of something that offers you so much relief it's so hard to see how something in the long run could be so devastating so I took a benzodiazepine for about 13 years and like I said I was purchasing them illegally initially and then I went to a doctor and I got prescriptions for him. And initially it was, there was so much relief initially, but then over time it becomes less and less effective because you need more and more of that dose to get the same effect. So I started out on, I don't know, maybe half a milligram of Xanax a day, you know, then it had to become a milligram then a milligram and a half, then two milligrams a day. Then I switched over to Ativan, and then from Ativan, Xanax extended release, and then eventually I found my way to Clonopin. And towards the end of my benzodiazepine use, I was taking five milligrams of Clonopin per day, plus other drugs on top of that. So I was also taking, oh God, an antidepressant, um, an, an antipsychotic, um, Indorol for, for a heart condition, which I have since discovered I don't actually have. I was taking opioid medications and I was just completely a mess. I mean, I went completely sideways. I was so sick. I was always depressed. I was always anxious and I'm taking all this medication that's supposed to alleviate these symptoms, but here I am now and I'm so much more anxious having taken them for so long and now I'm stuck because I can't stop taking benzodiazepines. You can't just abruptly stop them. You could go into a seizure. It can kill you. It's, it's fatal. People have died from taking benzodiazepines for a long time and then abruptly stopping them and you go into seizure and you die. And so I, I just didn't know what to do. My family didn't know what to do with me. You know, I was just a complete wreck. And um, long story short, I ended up going into a treatment center and um, <laughs> they assured me, we're gonna get you off these drugs. You're gonna be okay. We're gonna keep you comfortable. And um, we know how to detox people from benzodiazepines. And I was just so desperate and I was so out of my mind at the time. I just said, okay, let's go do this. I'm willing to try it. What I didn't know was that they really didn't have any protocol for taking somebody off 
but benzodiazepines. Somebody like me who is on benzodiazepines for long term, they really did not have a protocol for that. Nor is there really any protocol for getting somebody off long term benzodiazepine use. So I was just at the mercy of these doctors who were trying to help me and the treatment center staff. And I was, they took me off the medication in nine days. Now, anybody who has any experience or any knowledge of long-term benzo use knows there's no way you should go off a of benzo in nine days. You know, I was taking this drug for 13 years. I was on five milligrams of clonopin a day. So to go off of it in nine days is, it shocked my nervous system and my body. Um, I think that the only reason I'm still here is because they treated me with gabapentin during that time, which kept me from going into seizure and gave me just enough coherence that I was able to kind of squeak by one second, one minute, one hour at a time. Um, but after that nine day taper, I'll call it a taper, I mean, it was almost cold turkey. After the nine day taper, when I came off of clonopin completely, within the next 24 hours, I went into a period of psychosis. Um, I completely lost touch with reality and um, I was just out of my mind. My heart rate was extremely high. Um, I was having tunnel vision. I was having hallucinations, auditory hallucinations. I was hearing things that weren't there. I was seeing things that weren't there. Um, I, I couldn't get up and, and walk. I, I couldn't eat. I, I couldn't do anything. I was just laying on this bed in this treatment center with like 150 other people running around and out of my mind. And, and, and the staff there really didn't know what to do. I don't know if they were freaked out, but nobody really came to help me for the first few days. I just kind of laid there out of my mind. Um, and, and I talked to the doctors and, and what I could try to convey to them was like, look, I, I need help. I, I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I just, I was completely out of my mind. Um, so I thought that the only thing that I could do, the only way I could see out of that situation was to kill myself. And, um, so I thought I'd put my fist through the glass in the room and, and, and get a sharp piece of glass and just cut myself and die. And so I told him that that's what I was going to do. Um, and that earned me a trip to the hospital psych ward, not too far from the treatment center I was at. Um, and I was in there for a couple days and then they released me from the psych ward back to the treatment center. Um, it was horrendous. Uh, I went, I ended up going back to another hospital down there. Um, so they could try to give me some fluids, try to see what was going on with me. Um, it was a horrendous ordeal. I, I can't believe that I actually made it through. I survived it. The doctors at this treatment center told me that I was the sickest person that they had ever seen. The sickest person they had ever seen. I'm talking about, you know, people who'd been using intravenous drugs on the streets, um, meth addicts, heroin addicts, uh, you know, anything you could imagine. And, um, I, I was, I was sicker than all those people in that place. Um, that's what benzodiazepines and the other drugs I was taking did to me. I was just on a very potent cocktail of hard medications and I was drinking on top of that. Um, but the real kicker was the benzos for me. That's what really did me in. That's what made me 90% I think as sick as I was. I had been through opiate withdrawals so many times prior to this experience and, and opiate withdrawals as bad as they are didn't hold a candle to going through clonopin withdrawal. Just not even in the same universe as far as the amount of suffering and the amount of time it is taking to recover from that drug. So the last clonopin that I had was in September of 2015. I think it was September 24th, 
or 25th of 2015. That was the last one I had. Um, now as I record this, it's August of 2022. And so it's been almost seven years that I've had no clonopin. And I'm still feeling effects from it. My, my memory is still, still affected. Um, I still have anybody familiar with benzo belly, which is basically bloating, distension of the belly, um, stomach cramping. I still have that, though it's much, much better than it used to be. Um, I think my nervous system is still damaged. But my point for making this video is to let people know that it's not impossible to come out of such a bleak, dire, shitty situation and to, and to recover from it. It's possible. You know, here I am. You know, I, I, I can work full time. I have a sales job right now. I have two kids. I'm married. We just moved. Um, you know, life is, is good today. It's, it's good. And I, it, the whole experience taught me so much. It taught me so much about staying present, about having a life of meditation and these things that I took for granted for so long in my life that I try not to take for granted today. You know, the fact that I woke up today and I've got food to eat, the fact that my body works, even though it's still somewhat damaged from all the abuse that I did to it. It's so possible to get through benzodiazepine withdrawal and to come out the other side. You know, I'm, I'm nothing special as far as, you know, having some super ability to recover from something. Um, you know, I could go on and on about the experience directly after coming off of benzos and the months and couple years that follow that. And maybe I'll make some more videos talking about that, you know, if that's helpful to anybody. But right now I just wanna say that life has been challenging since coming off of benzos. It's like walking out of a fog into a completely different reality. And it was so challenging. And there were so many times that I thought, why don't I just give up? This is too hard. It's too painful. It's, it's unbearable. But something in me, maybe it was my daughter, my wife, the fact that I wanted to live for them, I just kept going one day at a time. And my recovery community has helped me out tremendously through this process. And I've experienced so much healing over the past seven years. You know, if you're struggling, if you're there right now, if you're still in the midst of benzodiazepine withdrawal, post withdrawal, you know, I know there's so many people out there struggling and there's so many people who just need some hope. You know, I would say everybody heals at their own rate. Everybody heals at their own pace. You know, it's comparing your, yourself, comparing your journey to somebody else's journey is not going to help you. I learned a few little tricks, tips. Um, there are some supplements that I take that help out. I can make future videos on that if anybody's interested. For now, I just want to say it's, it's so possible to heal from this. It's so possible to come out the other side. My life is better today than it was before I ever took a benzo. I, you know, just if you're struggling, reach out for help, keep going, and you're not alone. There's so many other people out there. The benzodiazepine withdrawal epidemic 
is the next big epidemic. It's happening now. It's been happening for a long time. It just hasn't gotten the national recognition or the worldwide recognition that that opiates have and crack cocaine and all these other things. And that's due largely in part to the fact that it's doctor prescribed. It's a doctor prescribed epidemic. I'm not blaming the doctors, but the fact is it makes it a harder phenomenon to gain traction and recognition in a lot of ways. It's Benzodiazepines are a deadly, deadly drug and so dangerous. And I just want to bring some awareness to how dangerous they are before the next person decides to go down that path or unbeknownst to them, start taking a drug that they don't know what's going to do, do to them in the long run. That's all for this video. I'll be posting more. If you, if you'd like to ask me anything, please leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you and answer that. If you need any help, um, please get some help. If you're feeling suicidal, I'll post a link for a suicide hotline and please reach out for help. You're not alone. Keep going. You can do this. You can come out the other side. There is hope for you. I love you.